Yeah, that's mm-hmm. exactly what this section of guys needs. Is Jay takes one in the eye there. Right in the eye. <laughs> this is uh, this to me when we were doing these rankings came down to being like the toughest section of guys. Um, I think kind of seven, eight are, are real tough for me. And then leading into nine is, is kind of kind of tough. And then again, kind of 10 and 11 were also pretty tough. But I think there is a little bit maybe of a tear break between just slightly between seven, eight, and nine, and then ten and eleven are a little, little tougher. But kind of which order to put them in. So to kick this thing off at seven, I think I'm going to have to go with Rashad Penny here. We left the last uh, episode. Got to come off. off the board sometime, right? We, yeah, we left the last episode off saying, you know, don't be mad at us because we didn't take Penny in the top six. Well, I'm, I'm coming back at seven. I think I want to take him here. I I could like I really like Josh Adams. I could be easily persuaded to take Josh Adams here ahead of Penny, um, but just on my quick uh, reasoning for taking Penny here, uh, just a recap of what he did. He was number one in rush yards this year, um, number one in yards from scrimmage, uh, number three or number two in touchdowns, depending on where you look. Uh, only second to. Devin Singletary from Florida Atlantic he scored like three years worth of touchdowns. 32 touchdowns in a season <laughs> is pretty silly. Um, and he was number six in rushing attempts. So basically this guy was the workhorse for his team and he shined doing so. He had so the that, fifth best season of all time with 2,200 that deserves plus rushing yards. a tip of the cap. I think there's only like 20 guys over 2K in 20, 25 guys over 2K in, in, the, in, their, in a single season. Um, so the, all very impressive things. Like I said, I do like Adams' running style a little bit more than I do Penny's. I think that translates a little better into the NFL style right away. Um, but what I lend Petty the edge here on is I think there's maybe a little bit more versatility right off the rip with him, or at least perceived versatility right off the rip with him. Um, I think he, you know, you saw him kind of in the slot sometimes. You saw him catching balls out of the backfield a lot more than you saw Josh Adams doing so. And I could see maybe Josh getting pegged into that first and second down role and maybe it being easier for Penny off the rip to get involved and, and, and score points for your fantasy team. I don't know. What, what, do you, what do you guys, where do you guys have as, as your number sevens? Oh man, I think I, I, I want to take Josh Adams at seven. So you like Josh Adams at seven? I think so. <laughs> can you feel the tension in the air right now? I know I can. <laughs> well, there's not that much tension because I'm 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 in Camp Adams too. I just I, I think I gotta give a slight nod to to Penny as as we stand right now before this conversation takes place. Um, I get I get the versatility argument. That's that's got to be the best argument here because the perception is that he's a good pass catcher, which I do think he is. Penny, that is. I think he's pretty smooth in the passing game. It's pretty fluid. It's pretty handsy. It's not a ton of production coming from him but I mean you saw I think you saw enough and I think teams are probably going to feel comfortable with that and I I, I think and he caught it in the senior bowl and scored a touchdown so (laughs) it was a good looking play (laughs) it was a great play best receiver ever (laughs) it was a great play it was a good catch um man I don't know when it comes to Rashad Penny I just feel like for every pro there's like a con I don't. I don't see. I don't see a big con list for Penny. I see there's a, there's a few things that I don't like about him, but I, I do see a large pro list. Um, well, he's got he's got straight line speed. He's got decent straight line speed, but not like game break. He's got Mountain West straight line speed, yeah. not SEC straight line. But speed. But the acceleration isn't really there. Speaking I don't of think. the Mountain West and Penny, let me just what you know. Donnell Pumphrey had one of the best seasons ever last year. For the Aztecs. Yeah, I mean, Pumphrey, Pumphrey came off a, a great year, and I think we mentioned in the podcast uh, when we did the Penny talk about how the, they're the first tandem to go back-to-back yep. from uh, a 2,000-yard standpoint uh, on the same team, I believe. Um, but what, what's impressive, Pumphrey is, you know, like a buck 80-something, so, and so it's impressive what he did to get those yards. Um, but what's impressive about um, Penny mm. here is that he's his frame is so he's five eleven and two twenty and just ran for a stupid amount of yards. It wasn't just like some little quick guy who busted a bunch of really long runs. Obviously, Penny busted a bunch of really long runs. We well, did have a lot of long runs. It's impressive that that he did it with the frame that he did it and and is definitely being pressed, I you know, that. more swiftly into the top rounds of NFL definitely. drafts more, because he's more, seems. More NFL physically body, bodied, right. ready. You yeah, know. 
Well, he's definitely got the body. He's got, I mean, the, the size and, and weight and the speed, the long speed is pretty attractive. And he, and he did break a lot of long touchdowns. But for that pro, I feel like there's a con that's, that says he didn't break a lot of tackles. Right. And so, like, that's pretty much my biggest knock on this dude is, is that he rarely breaks tackles. Now, I know that Pro Football Focus charted him with four yards after contact which is a pretty solid number, but he ran for, like, so many yards. And, like, a lot of those, like, I could, I can think of a plenty of runs that I could point to where he was, it was some weak, high arm tackle that he just ran right through and then busted off a bunch of yards. It wasn't, like, a consistent every Plowing dudes over. play where he's getting four yards after contact. Right. Um, I, just, I just don't see him creating very much on his own. And so, like... What I saw was a big guy who's kind of freakishly fast once he gets going and running through a bunch of creases created by a San Diego State team that, that was runs, pretty good at runs blocking. The ball, runs the ball well. Versus mediocre competition at best. Right. So I, I would disagree with you. I think he has decent acceleration. I do think that he can create on his own. Um, I think he does have does have some wiggle to his game. I think he's got okay patience. Um, I just I don't enjoy the fact that he is so big framed and doesn't doesn't run more bullish like doesn't run like josh adams runs um and and that's that's the part that makes me really struggle with not taking josh adams because i think josh adams can do everything that this guy can do except he's more physical and just doesn't have quite the you know versatility that you're maybe looking for when you see the reception totals on this on uh, adams versus uh penny here all good points but let me play devil's advocate for just a second like Pumphrey had three ridiculous seasons in a row, and then Penny comes in here and has another great season. You did mention the back-to-back 2,000-yard rushing yards for the, the teammates there, which was awesome in the last podcast, pre two podcasts ago. But it's not Penny's fault that he didn't have to run bullish because no. they're running a they're well, running this offense that creates these holes for him. Like I mean, they, you don't have, but th- there, but you do see plenty of times where if he would just run bullishly, then yeah. I mean, you you when you're the biggest baddest dude on the field, you should have the mentality that you can take over the game and you're better than anybody else, and you can just go and get these yards when you want them. And sometimes he does. It's just the consistency of always doing it, especially yeah, against right. the guys that you were playing against week in week out most weeks. And there's like another pro con. Right. Like sometimes he will lower his shoulder, and, and and sometimes he'll get that that good forward movement. But like sometimes he straight leads with his head. Like I saw him try to deliver a blow by like dropping his head into the dude yeah. like that that to me is like come on man like i just think that's he, definitely going to lead to a concussion i think he tries to get too cute is my biggest problem with him is like i think he tries like he gets he is a, he's patient and i think he gets a little too trying to shake you and just just put your show lower your pad level and 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 you know make a make a quick move and, and be decisive and, and go forward um, and that, that's really the my, my biggest knock on him. And then when we talked about it on the on the show, when we did the full breakdown of him um, was that, you know, sometimes I think once this like just like you said, once this guy gets going and he's and he's rolling, he's really tough to bring down. You give him an alley and he gets he gets rolling down the down the old alley a crevice for, forget it a crevasse uh, but <laughs> but if you can get in his way and make him start dancing because he doesn't go straight and like oh this this guy's in my way he tries to dance around him instead of make maybe just make trying to get him slightly off balance and just trying to go through him you would like to see that a little bit more from a guy with his size 220 and, right, pounds i got it's my biggest pet peeve with this versus guy josh yeah. adams who's going to lower that shoulder right. and, and you can say that josh adams had a really good offensive line too which we'll get true. to um but there's plenty of runs where josh adams is carrying dudes and there's nowhere to go and he smashes into him and he'll get you three or four more yards and, and yeah. i think the balance is better there with josh adams like i think you alluded to the balance with penny like it's not it's not the best there's a lot of times when you you can see it, and you hear the announcers literally saying, "Like tripped up, he was tripped up, mm-hmm. he was tripped up." Yeah, a little maybe maybe slightly clumsy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what's cool here because you got a guy that went for two twenty two hundred and fifty yards at a long of ninety five, twenty three touchdowns, and we're just telling you what we see. A little right. bit clumsy. Well, Trip, I mean, tripped up sometimes. The dude definitely gets what's there, and oh, he sometimes got he got a lot of it, and yeah. sometimes he takes a whole lot more than what's there. And the receiving is a solid plus. I think he's got to improve his pass protection, and 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 just maybe he could be something pretty special. Who knows? But I mean, you 
you got to be willing to give up your Twinkie for the plum, you know? You got to, <laughs> is the juice worth the squeeze? <laughs> We're talking about the number seven spot meant. here. The Twinkie it for is, the plum? Yeah, no, I like your plums. Can I give you my Twinkie? <laughs> <laughs> Those are my hey, that plum looks good. You, can I trade it for your Twinkie? No, no these, these are, are my plums. plums. <laughs> You well, gotta feel it. You gotta have it. I don't have it for for uh, Rashad we're, Penny. We're on, we're on the same page. We're on the same page then. For for for, I got you now. And and like here's like another thing. Like Twinkie everyone, plum. yeah, I'm, I got you. We're, <laughs> we're gonna take. Yeah, I mean, is the juice worth the squeeze? Is it, will you give up your Twinkie to get that that Rashad Penny plum? Well, I mean, this is this is a really tough one for me. I think I'm gonna stick with Penny at, at seven here. Um, well, let me say one more thing on the media on on the topic because. Everybody freaking loves this dude, and we're going to take some heat even just having him at seven. Well, yeah, I mean, but he's basically I, like the golden child or or the copper right. child or however you want to well, go about it. 220-pound man running for 2,250 yards in college, is, that's got everybody's eye open. Let me just say one thing on, on the subject. Don't let the liberal media tell <laughs> you how to think and feel. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't want to just take this dude because I know everybody's going to be mad well, at me if I don't. Plus, I mean, people are like, we, we've talked about this a few times. You you can see how many people have watched videos. Mm -hmm. And when you watch the, oh click on the gosh. highlight videos of all these guys, it's three thirty thousands, times more. Thousands. And then some of these Rashad Pennies aren't even, there's not even a thousand people that have watched these game right. films that are games, available, which, available, which are, I wish there was more, but I got to right. watch these same six. You're but talking the about, highlight tape. You're talking about people watching the individual games on YouTube or wherever right. to study these guys as opposed versus to just, the highlight tape. Oh, look at this. Where, hi, this highlight tape is ridiculous. It's a highlight tape. Right. Everybody looks good on their highlight tape. Yeah. So you got thousands of people watching the highlight and tape look, and a couple hundred watching the actual game. This guy is a game breaker. He's somebody you got to focus on. You got you're basically all you're trying to do is limit him from busting a big play off on you. That's what you're doing when you're game planning for San Diego State. Or, yeah, it didn't work too well. It, it, didn't it did work not great. work. Right. All the time. Um, most of the time. Um, and he's he's got dynamic qualities. I just I, I, I just worry about some of it possibly translating and him being like. Maybe people he'll go to the NFL level and people will be like, oh, what's wrong with Rashad Penny? And you'd be like, oh, I don't know. Maybe he just played some mediocre talent and beat them all up. Yeah. Um, when you when you really get down to looking at things and you look at the teams that they played and the rush yards allowed, um, which isn't the end all be all. And you could it's semantics. You can get in here and, and use stats to bend whatever you want in any direction. But I'm just going to take this down down the list here. So Fresno State and Boise State. That's the 23rd and 33rd ranked um, defense, defense rush and rushing yards allowed. Those were like his worst two games of the season. Now, some of that was game flow because Boise State got up on them and, you know, they were trying to come back and they're not a come from behind team uh, very much. And Fresno won that game and limited um, Penny to not not one of his bigger bigger days on uh, under 100 yards, I believe. Um, you get to Northern Illinois who ended up being 10th ranked overall in rush yards allowed and he had a pretty good game against them over 100 yards but he did have one game one one run at the end of that game that put him at that mark with and if he didn't he would have been you know in the 60 70 range probably not not nearly at the mark that he ended with so not taking anything away from him there but when you look at the rest of these teams like okay he played Stanford and Arizona State both good teams he did play Stanford on the road Stanford on the road is not the same team as Stanford is at home but they they're the 86th team in rushing yards allowed. Arizona State 79th team in rushing yards allowed. Right. Air Force 117th out of 130 qualifiers. Nevada 108th out of 130 qualifiers. San Jose State 130 out of 130 <laughs> qualifiers. Hawaii 108 out of 130 qualifiers in yards allowed. UC Davis not on the list. <laughs> right. Like. This right. is this is you not know on the list. It's just <laughs> I, obviously you could go through this and and you could you could break down any of these running backs that way and oh well who did you play and where did they rank yards and all that other stuff and you know it's game flow and all that kind of stuff and game script and all that good stuff plays into that but it's just something to kind of that that I wanted to look into just to see what was really going on in the Mountain West and you mentioned it when we were talking about Pumphrey well what about right. this Mountain West stuff and it's like well. It's clear that the Mountain West defense isn't super great. Like mm -hmm. Pumphrey just crushed them. <laughs> San Diego State has figured out how to run the ball pretty efficiently. The boys have figured it out. And like they put back to back two thousand yard rushers out. These are Big Co alluded to it a while ago. Danelle Pumphrey. There's a, a handful of these teams that were all ranked 
in the bottom 100 of rushing yards allowed like and obviously he ran for a lot of yards and, yeah. and it was fantastic but then again when you go back and look at these multi TD games it's the same thing a lot of these teams are ranked 60th or below and some in the hundreds like we'll go back through this list again in the multi TD <laughs> and, and TDs allowed and, and the rankings for these Hawaii tied for 85th UNLV tied for 119th Air Force tied for 114th San Jose State, 130 again. <laughs> Nevada, tied for 90. New Mexico, tied for 67. UC Davis, still not ranked. Like, <laughs> there's, the, you know what I'm saying here? Like, yeah. I, and I get, like, you can only play the competition in front of you. And right. I'm, I promise that I'm not, I'm not sitting here hating on, on Rashad Penny. I just want all the stuff to be brought to light. So when you make your decision, you can make your, an educated decision on your own and not just watch the highlight tape and say, oh, well, of course this guy's a top. You watch the highlight tape. He's the best back you've ever seen. Like nobody's touching him. They're crushing it. And I don't, again, he is a really good player. I just, I don't know how well he's going to translate to the NFL uh, level because you haven't seen him play against top tier talent week in, week out. Like if you put any of these guys that we ranked ahead of him or probably below him in that system at, at Mount at, in the Mountain West on San San Diego State, they're, they're going to do crush. this. They're going to do the exact same thing, probably more. Yeah, like when perhaps. you see some of these guys, like when you talk about Josh Adams, he played Miami of Ohio. I don't know what division that the conference that they're in but he had like eight carries for 105 yards and left the game in like yeah. the first quarter and a half yeah yeah like that's you, who san diego stays playing every week basically right I miami of ohio uh, yeah i don't know <laughs> right but i'm that's i'm just trying to bring up a little light to the competition that he was playing and when we, we posted some stuff on youtube and somebody got us upset because they played stanford and and arizona state's not saying that they're tough competition hey they are tough comp at least they're in the pac-12 but Stanford at home is a little bit different animal. Stanford wasn't the best Stanford team that you've ever seen. And they hats off to Arizona State for taking it to Stanford this year. Arizona State, yeah, who's and nobody's ever like, oh, Arizona State, that you got to watch out for them. They're a buzzsaw. Well, they got Balage. <laughs> I mean, that's a big thing. Right. But yeah, that's about it. For sure. Like Stanford wasn't Stanford that we've been used to seeing in the last couple of years. They build a name for themselves, but it certainly wasn't Russian defense this year. No. And I mean, that, that that's, all I'm, that's all I was trying to get at and all that all this stuff that we've said is almost like making a case not to take penny here at seven but but we're taking penny here at seven I, i'm gonna stick with him i'm gonna i'm gonna have faith in, in his abilities and what i saw on tape there's a lot of really good things to like on tape i just want to just put it in there that the the con list for me like i said i only had a couple were the fact of that he does get too cute doesn't create on his own or he does he can create it his own he gets a little too cute while creating on his own and needs to put his shoulder down and the other one is the lack of elite competition that you saw week in week out well like you this is right we are at rb7 in the rookie rankings we're talking about potentially a tear break and we're arguing between rashad penny and josh adams for seven and eight right here but while before we get off a of penny and penny has we you know to put us a, a season on record here he's actually got put the fifth best uh, russian record of uh, russian yard season together in history but have, there's been 30 seasons over 2,000 russian yards in the ncaa before and there's eight or eight or so guys on this list that have made a name for themselves in the nfl barry sanders melvin gordon marcus allen reggie bush reggie bush is not even on this list he was doing a lot of that with the uh receiving so Marcus Allen, obviously, we just talked about a couple of uh, Hall of Famers. Melvin Gordon's been good. Um, Derrick Henry's on this list. He's con trying to be 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 something. Ladanian Tomlinson, all, all, obviously, Tony Dorsett, Pumphrey's on this list. Matt Forte, Ricky Williams, but that's just a couple. And then you got your uh, you got your Mike Rozier. Who's that? You got your Troy Davis. You got your Andre Williams. That didn't work out too good. You got your Kevin Smith. That didn't work out too good. You got your Bryce Love's coming around from Stanford. He's on this list. Ron Dane. That didn't do so hot. Dante Foreman just did Don, Donald Donald Brown. That didn't work out so good. Rashawn Salam. R.I.P. Damian Anderson. Who's that? <laughs> Charles White. Who's that? Tevin Coleman's on this list. That's cool. But you know what I'm saying? Like there's Christian McCaffrey's in the league. He put it together in Stanford. But over 2,000 rushing yards. Troy Davis. Byron Hansford. Who's that? You know, so there's, like there's not the, it's, right. These Even are, though it's an elite list, this is an elite. This this elite company here, but there's only ten guys all out of thirty. You know, two two or three of them are continue or you know on this list and playing. Derrick Henry, Christian McCaffrey, Tevin Coleman. These are good good looking guys in the NFL right now, but there's only like eight of them out of let's say. 25 of them that aren't on this list that aren't already in the, that aren't still in the league that were there's eight of there's eight Hall of Famers on this list 
And so that leaves about 17 people that you never heard of. So, Rashad, we got Penny, who's put together an absolutely monstrous season here, playing against people that don't really tackle well. And we'll see what happens. I'm just, you know, the chances. He's, he's got a, the, the people. He's on the list here with some really good guys, but he's on some. Uh, there's two, two to one people didn't make it. Just want to give a shout out to that fullback, uh, Bodden. He deserves a ton of credit for these numbers that Rashad Penny put up because he was out there laying wood. Like every big Rashad Penny play, you can find that fullback, number 15, putting somebody down, <laughs> like paving the way. Yeah. Give my boy Bot in a shout out. I had oh, to get it in there. Well, solid, maybe, solid maybe Rashad out. Penny put has a bust and puts a gold jacket on one day, and he gives his full back in college a shout out. <laughs> got to. <laughs> he should. He got to. The, an, another nice plus for for Penny is the kick returns. He absolutely lit it up on kick returns. So you got to love that. The special teams, though, like I watched the coach break <laughs> down like the special the one of the return touchdowns that he had, and he was like showing you how they were like fake blocking one way and then everybody just switched in reverse field and like they are in sync like this team is good to go they're one of the best teams in this division oh yeah you can't well coached well coached better come out of your well coached with with those types of uh those types of stats and out of the running back position for the fast past five years in those kickoffs his running style kind of comes out and you know that patience that you see like he's he's got good patience he he when he takes his runs he'll suck really hard up into that line and and kind of figure out which line he wants to take and and hit that hole just sometimes i would like it if you hit the hole with your shoulder down yeah (laughs) and i think i think i think he's got the size and speed combo to become something special i think that he's probably going to get an opportunity because he can pass he he can pass catch the pass protection i don't know if it's quite where it needs to be but i mean we've talked about it before like what there's who's not is. a ton of college backs right. that are like, oh my God, that pass protection. <laughs> I just, I guess you know you whose take... pass protection is probably good? Bodden. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, I guess you, I, we could take, we could take Penny here at seven, but I'm just, I'm not, I'm not excited, as excited or as giddy as nearly everybody else is out there because I've watched more than just the highlight tape and there are some concerns and it's not a sure thing here by any means. And any of the freaking next five dudes we talk about or four guys we talk about, landing spot dependent i could like i really don't want to make a call almost on any of these dudes until yeah. i see where their landing spot is but where's the fun in that yeah um, it's it's real close for me too right now like i said to lead this thing off the 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 tipping point for me is i do think that there'll be a little bit more versatility in penny right off the rip depending you know mostly obviously landing spot would you as you just said but He'll he'll be he'll get a, he'll get a chance at being like a third down roll back regardless of what he is and I don't know if Josh Allen if he goes to a team who already Adams. has a running back Josh Adams sorry will get that chance to be the third down guy I think he might get pegged as a as a first and second down guy and it's it's easier for Penny to get you production on your fantasy point or on your fantasy team right out of the gate if with the, the style of player that he is and he doesn't necessarily need to be the bulldozer to be the third down guy right off the rip I get it I'm with you. I uh, I guess I'm in agreement. I don't really want to, but I'll reluctantly put Penny in the it's seventh spot. It's reluctant for me too. I don't. I, yeah, I just read you a whole bunch of cons. Yeah, we went cons. off on the cons. We spent half of a <laughs> podcast talking about cons. Um, so we've we've gone way too long here on uh, Rashad Penny per use here at Married to the Game. Let's uh, let's get our composure. Let's let this beat drop. We'll go to break. We'll be back with more Married to the Game. <laughs> 